Welcome to Kingdom Living Ministries, where our vision is knowing God, loving people, and making disciples. We trust this week's message will be a blessing to your life. Enjoy the teaching ministry of KLM. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name, and I thank you and I praise you for this opportunity to share your word with your people. Think through my mind. Speak through my lips. Grant unto me your son and your slave, divine utterance. Holy Spirit, you're the greatest teacher there is. And I rely on you. I use myself as a vessel of honor, an instrument of righteousness. Thank you. I connect my tongue to my spirit and I speak forth an utterance. That's the spirit of God will give it to me. Give me those utterance. Pray this prayer. Say, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, grant unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you that the eyes of my understanding may be enlightened, that I may know what is the hope of your calling and what are the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints and what is the immeasurable greatness of your power. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm looking at a bunch of blessed people. Amen. Prosperous. Got the blessing of God upon you. Amen. And um, just want to encourage you that, that prayer that we just got finished praying, you should pray it every day. That's found in Ephesians 1. It has, after many, 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 many years of praying that, the manifestation of that prayer is happening in my life. Glory to God. And part of that is I shared with you last week that we may know what are the riches of the glorious inheritance in the saints. And I am come to understand how valuable I am to God. And I want the world to know how valuable they are to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, he, he has judgment on wrath. And, I mean, he has wrath and he's a God of justice and a God of judgment. But if you'll get in Christ, the blessed one, <laughs> you'll have the blessing on your life. Amen. Amen. So there's no excuse for people not being at church today. I just got finished driving 20 hours. Glory to God. And I'm on fire for God. I was in a good friend of mine, Kenneth Estrada, invited me down to Louisiana. And I told him I felt safer in Uganda than I did in Louisiana. I was in Alexandria, Louisiana, where there were snakes and um, all kinds of things there. <laughs> um, but thank God I didn't see any of me. God got this covenant. And, uh, and so, um, and it was um, dark, the roads were dark, and we were driving in the middle of the night going there, and I'm like, where the heck do you, uh, am I in? And I thought the KKK was going to come out. I, I just didn't know. And so I, I felt safer in Uganda. He said, sir, sir, I don't know if you saw it on Facebook. He said, sir, let me remind you, you're from Arkansas. <laughs> and I said, well, listen, listen, I mean, the town that I was born and raised in was, is, is a co college town. So it's not like that country. Right? We have lights, you know, you know street lights and so forth. And, um, but I, I thought I was in a third world country. <laughs> and, and so before I got there, I, I, we stopped in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, and um, it, it's, it's, it's a nice city as far as like it's clean. And um, Cordy said, you didn't smell the snitch, the snitch, the snitch, uh, uh, the stench. Of um, racism, I said, not really. <laughs> I think the white folks was happy. The black folks seemed good, good. <laughs> she said, you didn't smell? I said, not, not at all. I didn't, didn't sense it at all. I, stopped, I said, you know, I need to stop here before I get to Alexandria. Um, let's stop at the Apple store. And um, my phone was cracked, so my phone broke in um, Uganda. So I needed to change the screen um, protector and, and get some other stuff. We're going to talk about that. And then, and, um, and then I, I stopped at Target. I said, because they don't have Target in Alexandria. They, everybody got Walmart. So I said, I just want to stop, make sure I, we load up. Because <laughs> I didn't think we were going to. I, but they, they did have it. Um, but um, 
Yeah, it, it, it was a venture. So I was um, at Bless, um, Pastor Kenneth Estrada, Pastor Lynette Estrada invited me and Courtney and the boys to this pastor's conference, Supernatural Leadership Conference. It's not just a pastor's conference, but it's leaders and ministers and people from all around the world came. And I actually, um, he said it, he invited us when he was here. And, you know, I'm like, I'm really conference out. I, I don't, you know, like I, I've been to a lot of conferences all my little, all my days. All my days, you've been so faithful, right? <laughs> and so um, I just didn't expect uh, what I what I counter, and it it was it was really really life changing. Um, really, um, or at the end, the kids enjoyed it because they ministered to the kids, and so I'm grateful for that. And um, Destin and Declan took a lap for the Lord uh, again and again and again and again, and then Destin said, "Daddy." Next time, you need to take a lap for the Lord. <laughs> I was like, uh, you know, I'm conservative. You know, hey, I jump up and down. But that's like it. <laughs> so, uh, and then um, I was reminded, I don't know how old I was, uh, probably six. The Spirit of the Lord came upon me and I danced for two hours. It was five? Five for two hours as a little boy. And the evangelist, he just went home to be with the Lord, prophesied and said, God was going to use me with young people. And that God had a call on my life. But I was five years old, dancing for two hours under the spirit of God. I couldn't stop. I actually was like, help me, help me, mom. And I was just dancing. I was like, help me. I'm like, why would the spirit of the Lord come upon me? But he did. And our kids need to experience that. They need to experience encounters with God. And um, so, the last, so the last night, Destin and Declan, it's like, hey, make sure you come and get us early, especially when the spirit of running comes upon the adults. And so it, it was a different type of service, so <laughs> I didn't come and get them early. And they said, why didn't you come and get me? I said, well, it wasn't that type of service. It was more, you know, uh, sober, you know, sobriety, you know, like just, you know, one of those services you dedicate to the Lord and like, oh, I do whatever you say. And, um, and so Declan would say, oh, man, I wanted to run. Well, we're coming back Friday, right? I said, we might. I really want to get on the road. And he was like, well, I'm going to pray to God that, they're, that we'll run tomorrow. I said, okay. And then um, so he prayed and asked the Lord to move. And, and we ended up not going to that service because I was like, I'm going to drive home. Um, and so I, he said, we're not going to go. I want to run. I said, I can't do it. Oh, man, I prayed to God. For, for us to have one of them services. Man, I said, well, you can run out of church. I said, church is small. He's like, well, I'm going to pray for a bigger church. So that leads me to um, what's happening. So we sold as a church into some African pastors. We gave them a meal. And what you don't know, I also sold $50 into 19 pastors after I preached about prosperity. And that's not $150. And then when I was there, I wanted to, the Spirit of the Lord moved up on me and we sold, I sold significantly from me and Courtney as well as from the church into the service. Um, Y'all heard the update of how they turned us down to the zoning, you know, and, but the favor of God is upon us. So when we, we lost last week, but like I said last week, we lost what we won. So, um, so I'm driving home. Oh, I'm driving to Columbia, South Carolina. My wife is in Columbia. I mean, well, Charlotte. We're driving to Charlotte to meet her. And uh, I get a call, and it's from the zoning guy. He says, um, Pastor Wright? I said, yes, sir. He said, um, you know, um, we couldn't get that building because of the, the parking. And he says, how many people do you have? And I told him what I thought. He says, well, I just got finished talking to the landlord. And we, we, we want to make this happen. He said, when can you meet? I said, tell me the time and the date. I'm there. And he says, Monday at 4 o'clock. So the landlord negotiated, said, we want this church in here. He said, we got a, um, we got a car wash. He said, I will shut down the car wash on Sundays to provide enough parking for this church to be in this building. So I'm having a meeting with the zoning officer tomorrow. It is because of our confessions and our seed that we got in the ground around the world, both in Uganda and in the United States. Um, 
God opened that door just like that. Y'all should praise God for that. And Courtney said, if y'all don't shout, next week she's going to tear up this church and shout. <laughs> the favor of God is working on our behalf. The landlord negotiates, I want this church in here. And they, they flip the denial and says, we're going to sit down with you and we're going to make this happen. So y'all give God some praise for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, I believe in the power of the seed. I believe in the power of confession. I believe in doing what's right. I believe in honoring. And I went there with a suit on. My wife's like, why you got to go suit on? So I said, I'm going to see Miss Annie and I'm going to, to the zoning office. So I need to look good. And she said, OK. And so I went up there and, and he, he denied me. And I just sat down and was like, OK, no problem. I didn't fight. You know, he, he said, well, let me take your number. So I knew that was favor. So I took my number. He said, I'm going to put your number right there. And if something comes up, I'm going to call you because it was about another building. But that man called me on Friday. I'm meeting with him on Monday. Praise God. We're going to get our building. <laughs> We're going to get our building. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's shutting down the car wash to give us some parking space so we can get approved. Shut down a business on a Sunday. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we believe God for favor as we go in tomorrow. And, and I'm going to have some good news for y'all next week. Amen. Amen. Uh, so if you have your Bibles, go with me to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10. We're talking about living in the blessing and um, I tell you that I'm hearing testimonies from this series, and one guy um, actually said that it was extremely practical as they listened to the service of last week, um, the conflict, conflicting with riches, or the conflict with riches, the dangers of prosperity, and um, I, I don't want it to seem like I'm anti-prosperity, so that message actually was just a warning. You know, we got to love Jesus. Jesus is above everything, and we go after him. We don't come to him for riches. <laughs> we come for him for him <laughs> and, and for our salvation. <laughs> and, um, and we don't seek him for things. We seek him for his will. And to, today, I want to share with you living in the blessing, living in the blessing. And I, I do apologize, Mr. Alfred, for not having the notes, so just flow with me. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. It says this, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. I, this is the first time I've seen this. Um, I, 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 I noticed it um, yesterday or the day before. And, and I think one translation says, and it adds no sorrow with it. But in the Hebrew, and we see it's, it's not it, but he. The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. There is a way that you can get wealth without God. You do know that, right? Um, you, 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 can, you can have, there's what is called, as some scholars, uh, theologians would say, common grace. There's just a common grace upon humanity. And if they have put some laws into practice, some principles, there are some blessings that will come upon them to an extent. And so you can have a, a, a blessing in the sense of God's general blessing for all humanity if you do some principles that are, that, that are outlined in the word of God. But there's nothing like the blessing of the Lord. And with his blessing, there, 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 there is no sorrow with it. You can get wealth, but without God, <laughs> it's miserable wealth. You can have sex without God. In this miserable sex. All right, y'all, y'all quiet in here in this Presbyterian church. What, what are you saying? Have sex outside of marriage is miserable. You may have pleasure for the moment, but then there's some things that come along with it. Um, there, there's an extent you can you can enjoy things to an extent without God, but you won't get the the maximum enjoyment of them. You can have friends without God in it, but there's some, there's some the limitation. 
And I, I want to talk about living in the blessing where God is in every area. Amen. And, and, and if we can get him in every area of our lives, I, I, I do believe that you can enjoy life the way that God intended it to. In the book of James, come on, flow with me. James chapter one, we see the desire for uh, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And we see in first Corinthians that Christ has been made wisdom unto us. The word wisdom in the Greek is Sophia. Sophia. I'm not talking about the color purple, by the way. Um, it, it's the type of wisdom that embraces natural wisdom as well as spiritual wisdom. I think sometimes believers think that they have to choose between natural and supernatural. I know at one point in my life that I, I kind of felt like, oh, I have to always choose just the spiritual. But I, as I begin to walk with the Lord more, I understand that I can have the best of both worlds, that I can do the natural things like saving and paying debt down, and then I can invoke God's presence and favor on my natural. God can put super on your natural and what would take a person five years, you can get it in two years with his wisdom. Are you with me? And so there's some things, as you know, as you've been following me, and by the way, my wife has been encouraging me to post these things. So if you're getting tired of my little posts, just want you to know it's, it's not coming from me because I'm a very private person, believe it or not. And I used to be shy until the Holy Ghost got a hold of me. <laughs> Shyness is no longer part of my life. But I, up to, you know, a few, few months ago, I was really, really shy. He says, come on, <laughs> come on, you can't be shy anymore. Uh, <laughs> leave that alone. Step out of your comfort zone. Uh, I was with a guy. I, I was sitting down in a service. And, and, I, and this that doesn't mean, you know, I, I, I'm 40, 14% European, so I, I got some white in me. So I just, let's put the disclaimer. But I hadn't seen so many white folks in my life last week. I was like, man, but I did just come from Uganda where it's all black, you know. And I was like, oh, God, white people. I was just, I was just like, it was just interesting. So anyway, me, so this guy, um, he's, um, he's a black pa pastor um, in L.A. And so we, I'm going somewhere. So he, he sits right next to me. And, and we like, and so, you know, I'm, I'm friendly. Like, I like. I would talk to anybody, get to know anybody, uh, 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 or, I mean, until, if, if I think they're a celebrity, I won't approach them, because I don't think, I don't want them to think I'm trying to get close to them, because they got something for me. So I'm, I'm very careful. Like, you know, one time I was with, uh, at, at a certain thing, and, and Erica Campbell was there. I was like, yo, of course, like, don't even think about it. I said, okay. <laughs> and then, then Tyrese, the actor and singer. He came, he pushed me. I was like, I'm going to hit this joke. <laughs> like, I mean, I got videos of that. But <laughs> uh, anyway, so this guy, he sits next to me. And, and so I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, we, we're not a lot of black people there. So it's like, hey, what's up? He's like, hey, what's up? <laughs> and, so, and so I was like, what's your name? He's like, Tommy. I said, oh, like Tommy from Martin. He's like, yeah, yeah. I ain't got no job. You know, and so we just cut it up and we exchange information. And he's from L.A. And, um, and, and, and some lady turned around and said, can y'all please just go outside? I was like, oh God, oh Jesus. He looked at me like, I was like, oh, ma'am, you know, I'm trying to hear the pastor. But they were introducing. And I was like, oh God, what, what, well, why my emotions? Got to forgive her. I told my wife, wrong thing to do. She said, I'm going to write. <laughs> she said, that was a Karen, the Karen of the conference. I said, Courtney, what are you doing? Like, forget about it. Forgive me. <laughs> Karen, how Karen going to be in a Holy Ghost meeting? No, she was rude. Who she thinks she is? She's not in your authority. I said, okay, oh God, forgive me. <laughs> and then, so as she's talking, I'm getting upset. I'm like, oh God, oh God. Oh, yeah, I should have said something. Oh no. <laughs> but anyway, come to find out the dude I'm sitting next to, I think he's a millionaire. And he's a pastor. And Everybody knew him. I didn't know who he was. And so it's like a line full of people trying to get to know him. I saw a friend on Facebook. I said, oh, snap. This guy is not. Oh, he's the one who spoke at this big conference last year. I said, oh, snap. Jesus. I said, God is good because if I would have known that, I would never approach him. <laughs> Amen. So I don't know what that had to do with anything. The blessing of the Lord, right? <laughs> so we see the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. The blessing is referring to him. And as you know, as you get to know him, you're getting to know the blessing. 
I am not rich. I'm not blessed because I'm rich. I'm not blessed because I'm healed. By the way, the Lord healed my lungs while I was in Uganda 2017, was in the hospital 2018, back and forth. I believe I had COVID, despite Christina disagreement with that. It was COVID-17. Uh, I was in the hospital 19, 19 day, well, nine days and then back and forth. I'm still paying on those bills, praise the Lord, <laughs> but I'm paying on them. Um, so I, they diagnosed me as asthma, still in my 40s. I'm like, that don't make sense. Like, I didn't have asthma all my life. So they gave me an inhaler, and I've been taking it twice a day, um, all the way until when I went to Uganda. I haven't taken it since I left Dubai. My lungs have opened up. Amen. I am not blessed because I'm healed. I'm blessed because I'm blessed. I'm healed. The world, the Matthew 6 says, the world is seeking to be blessed. They want the bigger cars, the bigger house, but those things don't make you blessed. What makes you and I blessed is because we have Christ. We're blessed because we have the blessed one. So I'm not blessed because I got money. I'm blessed because I got him. And when we get him, we're blessed. Amen. And as a result of me being blessed, I got healing. <laughs> I got the provision. I got the wisdom. I got the drama free relationships. Right. Come on. Because I got him. I, so we, we got to be careful of equating blessings to being as, as a result of being blessed. We've already been blessed and we'll see this in a few minutes. And so. Um, in order to live in the blessing, the first thing that you and I must do, we must understand our covenant of prosperity and how it is God's will for you to prosper. Believe it or not, there's some people who don't believe that God wants them to be prosperous. I know it has a bad rep now, but I'm here to redeem the, the terminology that the, ble the prosperity gospel. Well, it's not a poverty gospel. <laughs> Glory to God. It is a prosperous gospel. And, and, and money is the lowest form of prosperity. Huh. It's the lowest form of power. But we got real power. Power to change people's state a bit, bit. The young man from Uganda who's a Muslim, he contacts me once or twice a week. Declan and I got a chance to witness to him. I said, you know, you, uh, you know I give him advice about th different things. And he, he, I said, well, you know, it's nice that we have this little friendship going on. But let me tell you something. I'm a Christian pastor. And if I don't preach to you, I'm not doing my job. So I said, can I preach to you for 20 minutes? He said, absolutely. So I began to take him from Genesis to the cross. And Declan was like, wait a minute, I got to tell him about Adam and, and Eve. And so he was like, yeah, so there was an apple that ate it for I said, well, really wasn't an apple, Declan. And, and so we're doing on what's apple, and we're preaching to him. And I'm preaching the gospel. I said, you got to be saved. You got to come in. I said, you got to leave Allah and follow Jesus. Uh, you know, and I went hard. And he said, I've never heard that. He said, I was born in this religion. And now all I know is this. And I said, I said, well, would you like to give your life to Christ? He says, PD, I need to. He calls me Mr. PD. Mr. PD, I need to think about it. And, and it's good because he got to count the cost. Because he might be excommunicated from his house, his family. He said, God forbid my parents know that you're preaching the gospel to me. <laughs> but what, what, what a wonderful opportunity. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we, we, we have to understand that this gospel is a gospel that prospers. It's a gospel that heals. Um, the Bible does not know a gospel that doesn't heal. You see Jesus de demonstrating that. And I, the question came up when I was in Uganda from some young men. He says, what about Job? What about Paul's thorn in the flesh? I said, let's go over there. I'm glad you asked. I said, Paul's thorn in the flesh was not an eye disease, but it was actually a, a, a messenger from Satan. I said, that was the thorn in the flesh. I said, if you look at the Old Testament, you see thorn in the flesh as used as some body or a nation uh, um, tormenting you. And everyone Paul went, there was persecution. Now, we're not redeemed from persecution, but we are redeemed from the curse. 
The blessing was released the moment that God created humanity and spoke to us. So go back to the book of beginnings, the book of beginnings. And that's Genesis for uh, one for those who want to be deep. Uh, verses 26, 26, 28. Like I said, the blessing. Then God said, let us make man in our image. It speaks of the triune God. You don't find the word Trinity in the Bible, but we see the, the concept or the ideal of Trinity pervasive in the Bible. So some, sometimes people are like, give me chapter and verse. It, doesn't, it might not say do not look on the internet at porn, but the concept is there. Then God said, let us make man in our image. So who are you made in? Whose image? God's image. You are God's um, image carrier. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Like he made us according to the way he likes it. <laughs> Glory to God. He didn't make us according to our own design. Now, granted, there's things you could do to increase your, your capacity, your mass, <laughs> and there's things to, to decrease it. I, and that's not what he's talking about. In other words, he made us the way that he wants us to be. We're not animals. Glory to God. We have, we have free will. We have free will. He made us a free will agent. Uh, we, we're not a worm. So don't ever compare yourself to worms. Don't compare yourself to any other thing. But he made us the way that we should be. And we should magnify those things. Magnify your humanity. Jesus is the perfect example of what a human being should be like. So Jesus did not redeem us from humanity or from us being a human. When people say, I'm just a human, they usually equate that with sin. That's not what being a human is being Christ-like. <laughs> he is actually the human that every human should be following after. He lived life the way God intended. See, God created the first Adam in his image, and that Adam fell from a place of righteousness and a place of grace. And, and what Satan was able to do through the first Adam, Jesus did far more in the second Adam. Glory to God. And so we see that this fallen nature came through a fallen man who was made in the image and likeness of the Lord. And so Jesus came to restore humanity back to its original state. That's a blessing. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about you, but, but I, I want to be happier than I've ever been before. I may not have everything that I want, but I have him who makes me happy. Happy is he who trusts in the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, y'all. Stop being like a Presbyterian church and act like so you know God. God is a happy God. He wants your families to be happy. You have little kids, make them happy. Don't let them regret growing up in your house. Oh, man, mom and dad was boring. We couldn't do nothing. <laughs> no, you better have some fun while they're little. <laughs> so they can have fun with their kids when they get older. Don't put down, don't, don't, don't set up the tradition of, are serious about God. He has made me sad. He has made me sad. No. He's a good God. He's a good God. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, have fun. Enjoy your spouses. And if you're single, enjoy your singleness. You can go wherever you want to go. <laughs> you can spend how much, whatever you want to spend. Don't have to check with nobody. You can just do, just like, I want to go to Hawaii for a week. <laughs> Don't have to check with nobody. <laughs> but if you're married, <laughs> come on, honey, let me take you to Hawaii. <laughs> Amen. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them, <laughs> okay, God said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. The creeps come out at night and you have authority over them. You have authority over them creeps. And when I was in Uganda, I was laying in that bed. I said, I take authority of all creeps. Anything that's creeping in this room, I take authority over you and I bind you. Get out of my room. I had images of snakes. It's like, hey, what's up, Petey? I'm going to get you. And I was like, I take authority over that. <laughs> Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Lord. And when I was in Louisiana, I took authority over snakes. I said, no, nah, you ain't going to get me here either. I'm in the country. I'm hearing the crickets. I said, in the name of Jesus. And I was, uh, sometimes, I, I noticed too much information when I was on the toilet. I was like, God, what if they came through the toilet? I said, Jesus, I'm in Louisiana. I'm down here. And they do roots and voodoo. I said, oh, God, what if somebody get my hair? <laughs> you know, my little shave. You know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus. So I, I'm telling you, God really loves me. Let me tell a story. I told this story a while, uh, a while back. So um, I, I, I was eating something I had no business eating. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to, you know, work in and walk in and out and all that, all that good stuff. And so I, I decided to eat some things and I overate it. And so I had to go pick up the boys from aftercare. If I don't, it's 20 minutes, an hour, $20 an hour. I mean, a minute, $20 a minute. So I was like, all right, let me run. Um, and so, but I had to use the bathroom. I had to do number two. And, and, I'm, and I'm driving. I'm good. All of a sudden. I, I, I feel a movement in my body. I, I said, Lord, uh, I don't know how to do this. And I pick up the kids. And I get there. One of the parents wanted to talk to me and tell me, oh, you know, your kids do this. I said, oh, yeah. I said, please don't talk to me. <laughs> and so I go, I get the kids and I'm like, okay, I got to go to the bathroom. But they're locking up stuff. So I'm in a car. It's 15 minutes away. So I'm driving. And I was like, oh, God, I feel it coming. And I said, uh, Destin and Declan wanted to talk to me. I said, please don't say nothing. Don't, don't, don't say nothing. If you say something, it will move. And so I was just like, oh, God. Oh, God. And so I said, God, forgive me. I will never do that again. Eat that stuff. Oh, I and I started forgiving everybody. Everybody from kindergarten. Lord, you remember that girl that I kissed and she got mad and told the teacher because she was white and I was black? Forget, I forgive them. God, uh, you remember the time that, that boy wanted to fight? I forgive them. And I went down and I said, God, please don't let me poop on myself. Oh, God, please, please. Oh, God, I, I call upon you, God. Oh, God, I, say, I go to Africa. I said, God, I go where? You know, I am going, Lord. You know, I'm, I'm fulfilling that covenant, that vow. And I just, I, I just, I promise you, I, I covenant with God. I said, I do right by my body. I have it sometimes, but not all the time. And God, and I was just, I was just, oh God, please don't let it come out. Please, it's going to be all over my, my clothes. It's going to, it, it, it's going to be all over. I mean, it was the type of poop that was liquid. And I was just like, oh God. And I just, I was going and said, God, you, you love me with an everlasting love. God, you love me. God, I thank you for loving me. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you for binding up my bowels and stopping them from coming out right now. And so we got to the house and I said, God, please let me get to my bathroom because, you know, I'm very I'm meticulous with bathrooms. I said, Lord, let me get to my bathroom, which is upstairs in my room. Lord, please let me get to my bathroom. I don't want to get to the nasty bathroom with boys peeing all over the floor. Lord, please let me get to my bathroom. Oh, God, I thank you. And so I just I went upstairs. I said, oh, God, thank you. Oh, God, you're so good. You're so and I still felt it coming. Oh, God, thank you. Oh, God, please don't let me get there. And when I got there on the throne and it was a release, a move of God. I said, God loves PD. He did not allow me to poop on myself. And it would have been a, a mess. Glory to God. <laughs> Come on, give God some praise for that. <laughs> if I don't know God love me, now I do. <clears throat> All right, let's go back to the word. <laughs> he, take, he take your authority over creeping things. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. This is when the blessing was released. And God said, so up to this point, he gave them authority. He made them in his image and his likeness. And then now he released the blessing upon them. He said, and God blessed them. How many know when God blesses you, it doesn't matter who tries to curse you. <laughs> What God is blessed, who can curse? So don't ever be afraid of people who, who, does, who do spells and voodoo and stuff. I mean, we were in, in Uganda and, and there was stuff around. So I'm going to bed. <laughs> I ain't, I'm not going to stay up in war with this stuff. I'm going to sleep. So it says, and God said to them, notice when he blessed them, he spoke something. Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Notice that God did not give man dominion over other men. God will never cause you to have authority in that sense of controlling and ruling over other people. But animals, 
and different things. And in Psalm 8, it says, you know, it talks about in the Psalms that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But it also says that heaven is the Lord's heaven and the earth he has given to mankind. So in this earth, we're to reign and rule. And we know that the Garden of Eden, they can't find it. And, but we know that that was a place on which the blessings of God in heaven invaded. The Lord released the blessing on humanity when words were spoken to humanity. And I want you to know that the blessing is released when faith-filled words are spoken. The blessing is activated when words of faith are spoken. So let me show you through some scriptures the covenant that you and I have as it relates to prosperity. Are y'all okay with this? I'm not going to keep you long, but it's been a minute since I've been here. <laughs> I mean, I know the last three weeks I was here, but I'm talking about before that. John chapter 10, verse 10, a familiar scripture. John chapter 10, verse 10 says this, the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I came that they may have life and have it, what? Abundantly. God wants you and I to have abundant life. Look at your life right now. Think about it. Are you walking in abundance? God wants you to have abundant joy, love, peace, he wants you to have an abundance of healing in your body. He wants you to have abundance of wisdom. And he wants you to have abundance of finances. I've come that you may have life and that you, amplifies that says you may enjoy life till its fullness. Christians should be the number one people, the, the happiest people on the earth. One, they should have more joy than anybody else. We have, we're connected with the joy giver. And our marriages should not necessarily be perfect, but we should have heaven in our marriages. If you're single, you should have heaven on, on your singleness. In your finances, you may not be uh, Bill Gates and different ones who have money, billionaires, billionaires, but you should have an abundance of finances to do the will of God. Yeah, yeah, that's the will of God for you, to have an abundance in your friendships. <coughs> should have um, <clears throat> real, true friendships. It should be a type of friends that will sharpen you, that will cause you to come up higher. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's the type of life that God, have, he has designed for his people. Your friendship, if you don't have any friends, it's your fault. <laughs> um, the Bible clearly says he that has friends must first show himself friendly. And if you don't have any friends, don't blame God. And you sit there, Lord, give me some friends. You better open your mouth and get to know some people. Closed mouth don't get friendships. <laughs> and you got, you got to engage other people and you got to find out how can you witness with a closed mouth? How can you be a blessing with a closed mouth? And so you got to open your mouth and do some things that you're not comfortable with and, 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 and learning how to reach out to people. Amen. So we should have godly friends, friends to promote, to promote and to sharpen us. I'm not saying that all your friends have to be Christians, but, but we know that you can have good relationships with people who don't know Jesus. And prayerfully, you're trying to get them to know Jesus. Go to Psalm 23, Psalm 23. Uh, we're talking about living in the blessing. Uh, we, we want God's blessing. We want the blessing on everything that we we encounter. We should have the best sleep. Come on. We struggling with our sleep. We, we, we should not be struggling with our sleep. Psalm 127 says he gives his beloved sweet sleep. And if we're struggling with our sleep, there's something we're doing wrong. Maybe we're, we're eating the wrong food. Whether we're looking at something. Maybe we have not, dis, not um, mastered the art of casting our cares upon the Lord. Something is wrong when we don't have enough sleep. Some of us think that let me work a little harder and not sleep. A lack of sleep is a lack of trusting God, one, and a lack of sleep will not do your body any good. You can actually get diabetes from not sleeping enough. Huh. So it, it, some people die early because they don't sleep. 
you can sleep too much, <laughs> and that's not we're not talking about that. But some of some people are not sleeping enough, and you you have to really check that. Jesus demonstrated that even on the on the ship, on the boat. Uh, Psalm twenty three verse one: The Lord is my what shepherd, right? A, a shepherd protects. A shepherd guides. He he leads. He directs. He he provides. The Lord is my shepherd. I love the way that David said, my shepherd. He's not just a shepherd. He's my shepherd. He has to be your God. He has to be your Lord. He has to be your provider. Come on. I shall not want or I shall not lack. There should be no lack in a Christian's life. If there's lack, you need to go back and say, where did I miss it? If there's sickness working in your body, you should seek the healer. It says, where did I miss it? There's one man of God that I admire. Um, and he had been preaching, he's, he's in his 80s, and he believes in healing. God has used him for a lot of great healings, and he was having problems with his arm. He was seeking the Lord. He said, I, I confess and I believe that I receive healing in my arm. What's going on? And the Lord told him, give up the coffee. And the moment he gave up the coffee, he was drinking a pot of coffee a day. And the moment he gave up the coffee is the moment his arm was totally healed. Amen. So there's some natural things you got to do. Come on. Sometimes people are so deep. They, oh, I want to believe God for healing. But there's some things you have to simply doing the natural with God's wisdom will change your life. So where, you know, science is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. We're not to believe false science. It's the false science. But there's some good science. That we, if they, if men and women have discovered things about the human body and the brain and and the finances, then we can tap into that with the wisdom of God. Amen. We're not to reject that because it's not coming from directly from the Lord. Are, are you with me? You should read some books that that, that not necessarily. If you're just reading Christian books and theology books all the time, you're missing out. You're missing out. There's some other things. You, you, you won't live life to the fullness. You'll, be, you'll come to a place of, 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 of a lid over your life. That we, can, we can tap into that and have the, that wisdom, that natural wisdom, along with the wisdom of God, and live on a higher level. The blessing will cause us to live on a higher level. Why y'all looking at me like that? Like, you have just fell out the sky. <laughs> I shall not want. I shall not like. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Living in the blessing will cause you to enjoy rest. And, and we see God who worked six days and rested on the seventh. If the creator who doesn't need any rest needed to rest, you and I should master living, working and resting. There should be God's blessing when we're resting. Watching TV, by the way, is not resting. You, you, you use a lot of energy when you watch TV. Your brain is going and your eyes is looking at things. You got to learn how to rest or you, you'll live, probably live a short life. The reason why good people die, bad things happen to good people, is because good people make dumb decisions. <laughs> Sometimes people are like, well, they want to ask that question. Why do bad things happen to good people? Because sometimes good people make dumb decisions. Yeah. And there's a law in the, world, or in the earth that will work against believers. Just because you're a believer, you're not exempt for what's happening in the earth. You, you cannot stop the aging process, but you can age well. And you can have quality of life. We, we, you, yes, you can't do what you used to do when you were three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, but, but, but as you get older, get the wisdom so you can have the quality of life and serve God better. That went over real well. Um, he leads me besides the table. He restores my soul. There's some things that your soul has been through, and your soul needs some restoration, some healing for your soul. How many know Jesus is the mender of the brokenhearted? And, the, and if you're in the blessing, he'll heal you. He, you may not be able to forget those traumas from your, your childhood. But he can heal it and, 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 and turn your mourning into a ministry, your, miser your, your misery into a ministry. 
You, you can minister out of a place where you used to be broken. God loves the brokenhearted. So he can take your heart that was broken, heal it, and you may have some scars on it, but he can turn them star, scars into stars. He can take what the enemy meant for bad and, and, and use it for your good. It's a setup for what you, God has for you next. That's good news. So it, it doesn't matter. So he restores your souls. He leads you into the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you can't get rid of that the fact this is not heaven because there's no shadow of death in heaven. And so as you're on the earth, you're walking through the valley, the valley of the shadow of death. Death is all around us. We can either choose life or death. Death is all around. Curses or blessing. It's all around us. You're walking. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you fear no evil. Fear is not of God for you. You're with me. You, you your, and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God has a table prepared for you. This is not heaven. Right now, there's a table. Living in the blessing is being able to eat at the table. And you can give to such an extent and, and obey God to such an extent that whether your kids serve God or not, they'll never have to beg. I've never, I've, I'm, I've been young and I'm now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for what? Bread. Begging for a covenant, not just physical bread. You can serve God to such an extent that the blessing will get up on your kids. And you anoint my hair with oil and my cup overflows. God wants you to have more than enough. If your cup is not overflowing, something is missing. Living in the blessing is for that cup to overflow. You should have more than enough smiles for everybody on your job and in your home. Come on, practice smiling. You may be going through hell, but count. The Bible tells us, as I hear an echo. The Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Count it all joy. What a wonderful opportunity to believe God. Wonderful opportunity to have some joy in the midst of this hell. Come on, practice smiling. There's something that happens when you smile physically. I mean, medical science has discovered things when you're, when you're full of joy. There's something that happens when you give. There's something that released. Life is released when you give. Not only money, but you give your time, your life, your prayers. Come on. Become living in the blessing is living a lifestyle of giving and a lifestyle of joy. <laughs> Yeah. They, they tell us from natural speak, naturally speaking, if you're going through hell and you're going through a lot of trials and, and a lot of troubles, if you just hold your spouse, it'll do, it'll do something with inside of you while you're going through because you know you're not alone. Naturally speaking, how much more when you got God in it and you're holding your spouse and you're praying in tongues and you're worshiping God and you're having tears? Um, Weeping may endure for the night, but the promise is joy will come in the morning. So we may be going through hell, but heaven is on its way. Come on, come on, come on, come on, because we got the blessing. And then uh, number six, um, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let me give you a couple more scriptures, and I think we'll call it a day. Go with me to... Second uh, Corinthians chapter eight. There are two laws at work: the law of sin and death, and the law of life in Christ Jesus. That's found in Romans eight one. Um, the law of sin and death, and the law of life, the law of life in Christ Jesus. There, there, the blessing and the cursing, the curse is on the earth, and so you're either operating in the blessing or you're operating in the curse. And I'm going to show you in a minute what Jesus has done for us. Second Corinthians chapter eight. And let's look at verse nine. Chapter eight, verse nine says, for, you know, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich. Yet for your sake, he became poor so that you by his poverty might become rich. 
Jesus, there was a great exchange that took place at the cross. Jesus became sick so that we could have healing. Matthew 8, 17, Isaiah 53, 1 Peter 2, 24, by whose stripes you were healed. And, and not only that, but Jesus did not open his mouth so that we could open our mouth. Psalm 107 says, let the redeemer of the Lord say so. So what are we saying? We're saying what we've been redeemed from. Revelation says they overcame by the blood of what? The lamb and the word of our, their testimony. So what are they testifying? Lord, pay my rent this week. No, they're testifying what the blood has done for them. Come on. That's the testimony that we overcome. So sometimes the reason why some people are not overcoming is because they're not testifying of what the blood has done. Comes to find out that they don't know what the blood has done. So therefore they don't know how to testify. It's not the testimony back in the day, you know, uh, you know, I remember this is ridiculous, but I remember a guy, a girl, a lady, um, she got up and she testified, you know, I, you know, I didn't have any food. I didn't know how me and my kids were going to eat, but we went to the grocery store and we just started eating the, the grapes. That's stealing. <laughs> you know, the grapes that just fall off. She, I, they're going to throw them away anyway. No, that's stealing. So you're under double crust. Double curse. curse. <laughs> you are breaking the law of God. And, you know, them grapes are going to turn into thorns inside of your stomach. Oh, God. Why? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on now. Y'all wake up. Uh, he, he became poor. This is not talking about spiritual poverty. This is talking about phys like he naturally, financially, he became poor. He left the glories of heaven, came to earth, and on that cross, he became poor. He became sin for us. Now, every aspect that we'll ever face in life, everything that's in your life, Jesus has addressed every area, and that's true pro prosperity, total prosperity, not only finances. Don't limit prosperity to money. Money is the Lord's form of prosperity. I'm talking about some joy. I'm talking about some health. I'm talking about some wisdom. I'm talking about wonderful relationships. Come on. I, I'm talking about the, the type of the happiness that you've never known before. God wants you to be happy. And if you're not happy, something is wrong. The blessing is not flowing in that area. You know, you can have the blessing in one area and not the other. You know, God could be such a great healer to your physical body, but yet you're lacking finances or lacking wisdom or you got drama-filled relationships. Or your leadership, still, your leadership has a lid over it, as John Maxwell says, and you have to break that lid. It's because you want the open heaven. You want heaven to invade your world, invade your mind. I, when I get older, I don't want to be losing my mind. I don't want to have to forget, forget stuff. Sugar will do that. It's this known fact that sugar is more addicted than cocaine. And so it's eating sugar and carbs will affect your brain later on, later. See, it, 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 you know, you, 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 you sow now, you're going to reap later. So you, you, God is not going to heal you so you can be fat and lazy. I, I, I want to. I claim healing. I'm confessing the scripture, but what are you doing? And I'm sure that the asthma that they diagnosed me with went away when I started walking more. I think that helped. Um, five, six, seven years ago, I was diagnosed as been pre-diabetic. So, um, no, no, no. We, we, I didn't tell Cordy because I would have been eating grass. <laughs> so I, I, I kept that to myself. I had my last junior cheesecake <laughs> as I was eating. After I got the diagnosis, I said, let me eat this last because I ain't going to see you again. Sorry. <laughs> and I went on a, a journey. And I lost the weight. My A1C was 3.0. And the doctor said, that's impossible. Yeah, I serve an impossible God. Your A1C is better than mine. That's right. Because <laughs> I got this law of the spirit of life, Christ Jesus, working in my body. You can, re you can reduce things naturally. And you have God on it. On top of that, come on, we can't lose. Give me a couple more minutes. Go to Galatians chapter 3. Uh, I'm going to have to do a part two to this. Didn't want to do it, but it's all good. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2.
um, I, I, on our way to Louisiana, um, I, you know, we stopped at a gas station. You know, gas stations are, some of them are rough. And um, they had a little, Mac, they had McDevils there, and the kids wanted McDevils. And so uh, I just, we gave them McDevils. God forgive me, this is not the will of God, but it's, it's convenient right now. <laughs> so I wanted something to drink. I was really thirsty. And I, I, I used to like grape soda as a kid. And so I went and they had a, and we're in the South. You know, grape soda is a little bit better. <laughs> no, no, no. As I looked at it, I was like, man, I was, just, I was daydreaming. I like, man, I can take that. And then all of a sudden, I said, like, hmm. No, I, I choose water. I choose light. That is not going to help me. That's going to perhaps put me on a path of getting back drinking soda. No, nah, we ain't doing that. So I walked away. Got victory. Naturally. I drunk, let, let me drink this water. This tastes good. Oh, this tastes like grape. Ooh, yeah, great, great, great water. <laughs> you know, great water. Yeah, that's a joke. Uh, Galatians chapter 3. Let's go. Galatians chapter 3. Let's look at this. Verse 10, for all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. So if we rely on doing, trying to get our righteousness any other way than the grace of God, we're under a curse. For it is written, curse be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. So we know that the book of the law, what is the law? The law, so what, the Pentateuch, right? It is the Torah. It is the first five books of the Bible. So the law is not only referring to the Ten Commandments, some people only re reduce it, but it's the first five books of the Bible, the law. Keep that in mind. So if you fail to do what's in, written in the law, a curse, you curse. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law. In other words, we cannot be justified or just as if we haven't sinned through the law of God. <laughs> I love this. For the righteous shall live by what? Faith. So faith in Jesus is how we should live. But the law is not of faith. Rather, the one who does them shall live by them. So if you want to be legalistic and go after the law, because as the Christian, the only law that we are to obey is the law of love, the law of Christ. But if you wanted to fulfill all the law, you're going to fail, number one, and it's, you're going to realize that you cannot fulfill the law at all, but Christ has, has fulfilled the law, right? The one who does them shall live by them. Verse 13, Christ redeemed us from what? The curse of the law. So everything that the law, all the curses that are in the law, Christ redeemed us from. Are you seeing this? Now, what is the law? The law is the first five books of the Bible. And I'm going to show you something in a few seconds. Uh, it says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. So we saw from 1st, 2nd Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, he became poor, which is a curse, that we may become rich. In the Hebrew, um, in the Hebrew, Isaiah 53, he says, when he says he became, uh, he bore our sicknesses or bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. The word grief, grief in the Hebrew means sickness. Sorrow means pain. He redeemed us. He became, and the Bible actually says, it, it, it pleased the Lord to crush the Lord. And so God made Jesus sick. Not physically, but he became sick for us. In a way that sickness does not have a legal right in your body. Grief has no right in your body. You may sorrow over a lost one, but do not grieve because the spirit of grief will come upon you and you'll be stuck there for years. Grief will take away from your life. Christ redeemed us from the curse of love by becoming a curse. So I don't have to worry about no curses. My master, my Lord, my savior, my big brother, Jesus. My, I am a joint heir with Christ. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Romans 8. So Jesus is my big brother. I, that used to bother me. Listen, no, he's God. He, he is God. But in my relationship, as far as my redemption, he's my big brother. And the Holy Ghost is making me like, like, my, like my big brother. He's the chief cornerstone. 
He's the stone that the father is making all the other stones like. Come on. I'm preaching better than you saying amen. And, and so Christ became a curse for us. God, the father turned his back on Jesus. He became, Jesus became sin. He became sickness. He became disease. He suffered. Come on. He became poor. He was, he was without the life of God in him so that you and I could have the life. He was oppressed and yet not open his mouth, Isaiah 53, so that we can open our mouths. Let's continue. For it is written, curse is everyone who is hanged on a tree. So the fact that he hung on the tree, he became a curse. And this is the part, verse 14. So that in Christ Jesus, everybody say, in Christ Jesus. Come on, say it with some gusto. In Christ Jesus. Come on, in Christ Jesus. So when we were born, born into the world, we were in Adam, the first the first Adam. God saw us and related to us as the first Adam. So when the first Adam sinned, we all sinned. It was in him, in the first Adam, we became a curse on this earth. When we got born again and Jesus rescued us from our sins, we was placed in Christ. The Holy Spirit took us and baptized us in Christ. There's three types of baptism, water baptism, baptism in Christ, baptism in the Holy Spirit. We were baptized in Christ and became part of this great body of believers. And so in Christ, that's who, that's where I'm at. In Christ, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. There's some in Christ realities that we need to walk in. So in Christ. So I like to see it like this. This is the way the Lord showed, showed it to me many, many years ago. Um, I said, what does it mean to be in Christ? And I saw a glove. Back in the day, it was Michael Jackson had that gold glove, right? When you put the glove on, you don't see what's inside the glove. You see the glove. And in Christ, God sees us in Christ. He does not deal with us based on our own righteousness, but he deals with us based on the righteousness of God in Christ. Are you with me? So in Christ, let's read the rest part. It says, the blessing, everybody say the blessing, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Gentiles are people without a covenant with God. People who are, don't know the common wealth of Israel. So that we may receive the promised spirit through faith. Bear with me. Let's go real quick. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Let me, let me share a little bit and then we'll do a part 2. Uh, Next time. Genesis chapter 2. Let's look at verses 15 through 17. The Lord, Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to what? To, to what? To work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, you may surely eat of, tr of every tree of the garden, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you should not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Well, we know from Genesis 3, he did what the opposite of what God told him to do. Now, death here is, it, we know that there's at least three different types of deaths. There's the, there's the second death, there's the physical death, and spiritual death. And what happened right away when Adam and Eve took the fruit, their eyes were open, they realized they were naked, there was shame that came, there was fear that came, and guess what? Spiritual death entered into the world. If the law is the first five books of the Bible, and Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, Part of that curse is spiritual death. We've been redeemed from spiritual death. Death, spiritual death should not be a part of the Christian life. And physical death we got to deal with. Second death we should not see. But spiritual death we've been redeemed from. Let's continue. Um, chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 16. We see the Lord addressing the serpent. Uh, and then verse 16, to the woman, he says, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. And in pain, you shall bring forth children and your desire shall be contrary to your husband. And but he shall rule over you. Let's stop there. So we know that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law and part of the curse of the law, contrary to proper belief, contrary to what science has said, you can be redeemed from childbirth. The pains. The pains. Come on. It does not have to be the max. You've been redeemed from the max of the pain that's going to bring, that's going to, that's going to cause you to bring forth a child. 
All right. I didn't get a lot of amens on that, but let's continue. All right. <laughs> Verse 17. And to Adam, he said, but you have listened to the voice of your wife and you have eaten of the tree for which I commanded you. You shall not eat of. Cursed is the ground because of you. Well, we know that that the ground is no longer going to be cursed at the return of Christ. In pain, you shall eat of it. And all the days of your life, thorns and thistles, it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the, the field. And by the sweat of your brow or face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken, but you are dust, and to the dust you shall return. This is speaking concerning the toil and the striving that comes from work. Christ did not redeem us from work. Work was in place before the fall. But as believers, we've been redeemed from the toil and the sorrows and the pain of work. What, call, what men and women are doing to work harder for the bag, the blessing redeemed us from that. It's not going to be as hard to obtain what the world is striving after. Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things will be added to you. So the world is seeking after the things that the Lord wants to add to you. Are you with me? There's no sorrow with the blessing. Living in the blessing is living in a, in a, in a, in a, on a level, on a plane, on a dimension that there's no pain with your work. You can have a minimum wage job. What's minimum wage these days? $17? Bless the Lord. Oh, $14. Oh, that, bless the Lord. That's still a lot. Jesus, that's pretty good. <laughs> but the cost of living went up too. <laughs> All right. So let's, 14? Is it 14? $14. $14 minimum wage. It don't matter where you go. You can have the blessing. You can have the blessing in the midst of mi making minimum wage. The blessing is not the amount of money you make. It's you tapping in to God and his will for your life so you can be in the blessing. So what would cause a man or woman to take 10 years to do, you will do it in less time with the blessing. That's what I'm trying to say to you all. Yeah, you might have some pain by childbirth, but it doesn't have to be the max. That's what I'm saying. What I'm saying, you got to work. Working harder doesn't make you rich. We know that working what's smarter. Right, right. Because you can work harder and still not be rich. <laughs> but you get the blessing on your work, you, you, you obtain wealth. So, you, so the young man that I'm discipling in Uganda, as he's working, if he'll do what I share with him from the scriptures, he can be wealthy in Uganda, which 78% or 70% of the people are unemployed. The blessing is not limited to cultures, cultures or environments or whether there's a lot of jobs or not. The blessing will work anywhere. There was a young man in Brazil, my pastor who trained me in the spirit, Pastor Dave Robinson, he actually taught him about praying in spirit. This young man went and prayed in tongues all the time and he worshiped God and he honored God with his mind and his body and his mind. He prayed himself out of poverty and now he's a millionaire. Born in a country where there's a lot of poverty, born into poverty, and the Lord raised them up. Listen, I was at a conference. I was sitting down in the back, minding my own business, and the guy says, come here. He brought me up to the front. People were fighting over the front. He brought me up. That's a blessing at work. <laughs> Are you with me? That if you get living in the blessing, he'll bring you to the front. He'll take your business that, that you've been working on for years because you got, you got the understanding of the blessing and he'll bring your business up front. What, what you've been doing all along, he'll, he'll bring you up front. That favor, it, that includes the, the blessing. Word of God. Last thing I want to leave you. Now, I'll wait. I'll save that for last next time. The, the zoning officer said to me, because I asked him, I said, is there a lot of churches that, that apply for the permits? And he said, yeah. 
all the time. He said the problem is they sign a lease without checking the zoning and they're locked up in the lease and lose money over it because they didn't go the proper channel. He said, we get papers all the time from churches in Perth Amboy. What's the difference? This man took my number and called me. That's the blessing. That's the blessing. Living in the blessing. It's not limited to a pastor. It's wherever you are, you can start tapping into the blessing. Your tithe will get you, activate the blessing in your life. Your offerings, your, your acts of kindness, your words of faith, your lifestyle, your motives will get you into the blessing. You're in school. The blessing will get on your mind. Come on and change everything about your paper. I remember being at Rutgers and I was having a hard time in psychology, did not like the subject, still don't like the subject. And those who are studying psychology, I cannot get along with it. I was like, what the heck? What, what is going against some of the things that I believe as a little boy? I was like, what the heck? What is going on? You know, and it was just like, <laughs> and I wanted to study theology, not psychology, study of the mind. I was like, oh, no, 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 this ain't right. This ain't right. This ain't right. And I'm, I got to read all this stuff. I was failing. And my lovely wife says, go meet with the sir. I met with her. And I failed all the exam. Because of the blessing, she gave me a C. And C got me the degree. <laughs> I'm telling you what I know. The blessing will get you in places that your education can't take you. Uh, it, he will, the blessing will connect you with the right people. I'm telling you, I, I, I was at the conference and I'm meeting people that I'm like, whoa, missionaries and different people. And they speaking into my life and sit next to a guy that I just bought his book. And I'm like, what the heck? And him and his wife prophesied over me. I'm like, what's, God, what's happening? The blessing will connect you to the right people. Glory to God. And I want to encourage you today to tap into the blessing. The blessing of God is on every Christian. The blessing of God is helping you to lose weight quickly and get in shape quickly. The, that I haven't felt this good in years. I'm about to say years. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God! <laughs> I'm telling you, we're going somewhere. Amen. Show me standing. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Come on. Let's give God a praise like we've never given. Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. I thank you. And I praise your name, God. I glorify you. I rejoice of the God of the breakthrough. He's the God of more than enough. And I thank you for having more than enough. Wealth and riches are in my house because the blessing is there. Oh, God, I thank you that I am, we are living. We are living in the blessing. We're living under the open heaven. Glory to God. I thank you. Everything about our lives are changing. Glory to God. We'll have more happiness and more joy and we'll have more peace at night and we'll have better relationships and better communications with our family members and our spouses and our children. Oh, I thank you, Father, that we'll change the tra trajectory of our lives with the blessing. Thank you, Lord. We've been redeemed from spiritual death and poverty and sickness and disease and, and even allergies. God, I thank you that we deliver from allergies. We don't have to deal with these allergies. We don't have to deal with the back pains and, and the leg problems and, and the, the, the migraines and the headaches and, 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 and the little aches. Oh, I thank you, Lord, that you lead us to the right foods and, and the right supplements. And Oh, God, I thank you for leading us and guiding us in the blessing of the Lord. What, what you, we redeemed from the toil of work. Oh, God, I thank you. What's hard for others is easy for us because we connected to the blessing. Glory to God. Oh, God, where, where, where they can't control the kids, we can with the favor and the blessing of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. What just happened to me when I was down there? I was sitting down, me and the Wright brothers, we were sitting down on our own business. And um, I have an ongoing fight and debate <laughs> with the Strata brothers. <laughs> Uh, they're not, they're 10 and 8. 
And they believe this lie. And this is the lie. They believe that LeBron James is better than Michael Jordan. And I, and I said, that's a lie from the pit of hell. I said, I'm going to lay hands on you right now. And, and Pastor Kenneth said, get him, get him, PD, get him. And, and so, so they came to my table. They got all the little white friends. And they all, and Pastor Lene was like, what is this? What's going on, PD? I said, I don't know. They, the blessing, right? I, I FaceTime Stacy. I said, I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna FaceTime Michael Jordan right now. I lied. <laughs> I said he got a little gray in his beard, but it's all good. And I FaceTime. I was like, yo, play along. I text you. I said, play along with it. I face, I was like, yo. So Michael Jordan, who's the greatest? <laughs> I am. Uh, he didn't say nothing, but, <laughs> but, but I, I just say that that the fact that these kids were around, little kids. I'm debating with them though, <laughs> but that's a blessing. Favor of God. The favor of God. The favor of God. Amen. Amen. I want you to walk in the blessing today. Um, Stacy has a testimony. Thank you, Lord. Have a seat. Give me two seconds, two minutes. One, two, one, two. Check. Mic check. Okay. So um, as all of you know, I joined this beautiful church. About, I would say a year ago, a little, a little over a year ago. Um, and before I joined the church, I met my beautiful now wife. Um, and uh, I told her I was looking for a church. She was like, oh, you need to come to my church. I was like, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> so I came to the church. Um, and literally, I've only missed a Sunday twice since I joined. And um, I started to say, Discipleship with PD, um, befriended most of the gentlemen here in the church. Um, yes, I am a texter, so if you don't like me texting you, you better say something because I'm going to keep texting you. Um, but even more so, I was in a job that I thought I was thriving in. I thought I was doing the work of Jesus because I was helping young people, telling them about Jesus. And um, let's just say the devil was a little bit more... Uh, rampant in the leadership of the job than I would care to say. Um, left that job, maybe two weeks later, found a new job. I'm in New Jersey now working as a PE teacher, and I talk about Jesus all day. I had a student tell me the other day, Mr. Daniels, why are you always talking about Jesus? I said, because you need Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I love what I do, and even more so, I love you my church. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, so... Shameless plug. I make almost 30 G's. No, 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 don't say it. Don't say it. Okay, it's more. Yeah, it's more. Yeah, I make 30 G's more than I was making a year ago. So thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, PD. I appreciate that. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. look for it and I want you to activate it this week and I want you to have testimonies next week. The blessing, the blessing everywhere you go. Let's get the max out of our bodies. Let's sleep, have the best sleep, have, have the best love making time. Come on. Y'all got quiet on that part. <laughs> if you are married, uh, let's, let's, uh, if you're not married, the horrible sex in Jesus name, if you do that, <laughs> the curse will be, oh, no, sorry, let's not. It will not rise in Jesus. No, just kidding. No, I was just, <laughs> I'm off the charts. All right. Join me stand. Let me stop. My wife was like, cut it, cut it. You're in the flesh. You, you, you anointed, then you got to unanoint it. Satan came. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands. Let's worship. Father, I thank you for these, your people. I speak life. I thank you for testimonies. I pray that they'll live in the blessing everywhere they go. When they go to work, when they go to school, wherever they do in their home, they're blessed. Lord, just the blessing to clean up, the blessing in, in, in little things as well as big things. Lord, I thank you, Father. Thank you for living in the blessing. You redeemed us from the toil of work and the, and the strife and the pains and the sorrows of work for your glory. And even for those who are with child and childbirthing, that it will not be the max. <laughs> it'll, it'll be, that, that, that blessing will be on that childbirthing process in Jesus' name. I thank you for the minds of depression, those who struggle in depression. I thank you that the blessing will bring the joy. 
uh, and, and the peace that they have never known, Father. Let us be happy. The happiest people on the earth, not just here at KLM, but the people of God. Be the happiest people, not because of what we have, but because whose we are. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Father. Let joy hit our church as never before. Let us laugh and, and rejoice. And, and, and even as what you're doing for tomorrow with the, with the zoning officer, I thank you for supernatural favor. I thank you, Father, for this building. I, we praise you that we'll run around the building, even as Declan has declared it. Oh, God, I thank you that there'll be joy like we've never known it before. I thank you that salvations and infillings and healings and people taught the word of God to overcome in this life. God, we, are, we, we declare we are overcomers. Come on, say, I'm an overcomer. I overcome the devil. I overcome the world. And I overcome the flesh in the name of Jesus. This is my year. Come on, say it with some gusto. This is my year. This is my season. My season of favor. My season of joy. In this season, let it last to the day we go take our last breath in Jesus' name. Oh, God, I thank you, Father, where there has been dysfunction in marriages and dysfunction with parents and dysfunction with um, brothers and sisters and cousins and us. I speak peace. May we be the peacemaker. Your word declares in Matthew 5, blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called the children of God. Let us be peacemakers. Uh-huh. Zambay, kekore bisi konshandora baba bre. Thank you, Father, for the blessing bringing peace. Ah, uh, peace. I see some drama, but I speak peace. Ah, in Bakanda Baba, she kiko Baba Bambrete. Ah, peace. Peace. Torments of the mind. Peace. Oh, I lack, I see confusion in the mind, and I speak direction. I speak, I speak peace. I speak clarity of thoughts. See, my, if you'll do the natural, I'll put my super on your natural and I'll cause your mind to, to de develop in the way that I designed it to. Your mind will be sharper than it's ever been before if you'll get in the blessing. And I see, and I don't know how to say, articulate it. I have limited vocabulary in this arena, but the mental realm can be a ram of victory if you allow the blessing to employ your mind. Your mind could be the sharpest it's ever been. For I came to give you life and that more abundantly. I came to cause and to reverse the curse that has been placed in your mind, that's been placed in your thoughts, that's been placed in your body, that's been placed in your, 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 your finances, that's been placed in the lives of my people. I came to reverse that and cause you to live the way that I intend you to live, to live the way that I live, to think the way that I think, to see the way that I see. For did I not use my servant Moses as an example and the children of Israel, how they walked for years and years, and yet there was no feeble among them. And yet the eyes of Moses did not, were not dimmed. And that was under the old. And you live in the new. So walk like new people. Walk in new life. In Jesus' name. Amen. That concludes this week's message. And thank you very much for listening. For more information about Kingdom Living Ministries, please call us at 732-324-2200. Or visit our website at kingdomlivingnj.org. Also, you can write to us by mail at P.O. Box 519, Rancocas, New Jersey, 08073. And lastly, if you would like to partner with this ministry through your prayers or financial support, contact us via email at partners at kingdomlivingnj.org. Our prayer is that this message has encouraged you to live out the kingdom of God daily in your life by your obedience to His word. God bless you.